All right, uh, just like to welcome everybody to this uh, our webinar on uh, the Aboriginal Languages Initiatives cash flow template documents. I'm working here with Gary Anaquad, who's off screen, but will be leading this presentation uh, from the Saskatchewan Indigenous Culture Centre in Saskatoon. I'm working hey, here buddy. at Treaty 4 Territory. Yeah, hello, Gary. Uh, I'm working at a Treaty 4 Territory here in Regina at Sask Culture. Uh, I'm just going to introduce Gary. Uh, Gary Anaquad is a special projects coordinator for the Saskatchewan Indigenous Culture Centre, where he's worked for the, since 2007. Okay, thanks, uh, Damon. So this is uh, Gary Anaquad. I'm uh, calling, um, speaking from the Saskatchewan Indigenous Culture Center uh, office in Saskatoon here on uh, English River First Nation uh, Reserve Land, uh, Sunny Saskatoon uh, Treaty Six. So we'll uh, not we won't have a particularly long um, uh, seminar today, a uh, uh, session today. We're going to talk through a little bit of background about the uh, about the Aboriginal Language Initiative, but we mainly want to talk about giving people some 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 introduction to working with a cash flow spreadsheet, the cash flow template that we use with the Aboriginal Language Initiative. So this uh, this uh, webinar is really designed for people who have been uh, approved for funding for the Aboriginal Language Initiative. During that process, you would have filled in a budget uh, uh, that uh, showed your different costs, uh, whether it be for renting um, facilities, whether it be for hiring uh, support personnel or educators or translators. And so know what we need for uh, this next step for the approved applicants is to fill out uh, the cash flow. So this is really important, necessary paperwork. And we'll, we'll work through different uh, three different uh, examples of typical sorts of projects. So let me call up the, the, uh, the, the Excel spreadsheet that we sent out to folks here. And so you should see that on your screen, I believe. And so it's a it's a spreadsheet that has uh, uh, formulas loaded into it, and so uh, there's two main sections: a a revenue section, and really the main entry would be the amount that's been been uh, approved from from Heritage Canada, from Ali. Um, you you may have some other uh, funding, you may have some in kind so kind of funding that gets a little bit more complicated. And we, we uh, won't deal with those particular issues today, but we're more than happy to work with, with, with folks who have issues with third party funding and in kind funding as well. So normally then you, you would detail your expenses there on the left side in column A and then the amount that, that's been budgeted for those. <clears throat> now you see a number of shaded areas there. The funding is broken up uh, by quarter, April to June, June to July to September, October to December and January to March. And um, we, so it's broken up quarterly and you see these uh, shaded areas have formulas in them already that basically help uh, us do our calculations. And so we're gonna ask folks to be very careful not to change any of the formulas in the shaded areas. So you should only really be adding information in the clear areas, detailing the amount of expenditures that you would have month by month uh, that would be a breakdown of your total allocated expenses for the year. And um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's it, 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 so it's the, you'd have, I have to do little things like make sure you add the particular project name. So this is all going to be automated, uh, administered. Uh, and so we need to make sure we have the right project name. The funding program is, of course, the Aboriginal Language Initiative. And the fiscal year in this case would be, uh, 28, 18, 19. So you may need to change that. I'm not sure if we haven't had updated that or not. So that which should be uh, 2018, 19. And it would the start date would be whatever. And so we might, for example, start a project uh, this this uh, <coughs> this uh, September. So the ninth month there. And it's going to end March 31st, 2019. Okay. And uh, there's some, we actually use this, this spreadsheet to help us keep track of and administer the programs as uh, the projects as we uh, monitor them through throughout the rest of the fiscal year. So there's little check boxes there at the top. Don't be too concerned about those. So you just would click, and in your case, in this particular instance, it would be your forecast amounts. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is talk about a particular sample project. It, it's kind of a made up one, but it's an example of a project that is purely participatory. Um, and so uh, let me uh, zoom that up a bit here. Okay. So this is the Skunk Hollow Community Language Classes Project. So I'm not sure if you know, but Skunk Hollow is kind of the nickname for Musk repeating Soto Nation, which is, of course, of course, my community. And it's kind of a bit of a work plan, a sketch of what the, the project is. So this is a community language class that's going to be offered from September to March of this, this coming year. And with a for this again, it's just an example, but we assume they've been been approved for the upcoming fiscal year. And so this class, this this project offers uh, uh, three classes per week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's in the evenings from from um, uh, uh, in the evenings, and so um, uh, we offered for three hours uh, per evening during those those three weekdays. So uh, you could do a bit of planning, I'm, I'm sure. And so if you count through and look at September, for example, for um, this year, you'll see that there would be 12 Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays during that time, the 4th, 5th, and 6th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 25th, and 27th. So there are 12 sessions that we would offer, 12 classes. And we're going to pay our instructor $60 per an hour, and we cost things out. So three uh, three hours for $60 times E8, which, of course, is the number of classes that we're offering in September. So in September, we're going to pay the instructor uh, $2,160 for those 12 three-hour classes that we're going to offer Tuesday to Thursday each week, each weekday in, in, in September. And if we go through and look at the calendar, we have 14 days like that in October, 13 days like that in November. In December, we're gonna not we're gonna take a Christmas break, and we're gonna miss uh, the last week of uh, the December and the first week of of, of uh, first little bit of January. So we're only gonna offer the class nine times in December, and then back in January again, we're gonna offer the class 12 times. Uh, Tuesday, so Thursday, so once again, February 12 times and March 12 times. So there's our, our budget. So in se September, we're going to pay the instructor $2,160, $2,520 in October, $2,240 in uh, November, and so forth. And so we could charge rent at the uh, the gym there in, 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 in Muscopeding. So we very kindly offered a very low rate of $50 for, for for, for use of that facility. So, <clears throat> so for the 12 classes that we have in September, our rent is 12 times 50 is $600. And with 14 days in October, our rent in, in, in October is, is $700 and $650 in November and $450 in December and so forth. So, so our total rent for the project is, is $4,200. And uh, just backing up a bit, our total salary for our instructor is $50,000. $120 for those uh, for teaching those, those classes at that rate. We're going to provide some classroom materials. I'm not going to really break this down, but this might be handouts uh, for the for the, uh, the students. I do know from working with language teachers, they can get really inventive of the sort of materials they might use when teaching a language language class. So we're going to allot some sort of budget. Um, I did really, we probably would want to see a bit more detail, an estimate of the amount, amount of paper that you might have, you might be just, might, might distribute. We're going to estimate, we're going to attract on average 50 participants per, per class per week. That's a bit high, uh, I, based on my knowledge of us competing, but no, it, 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 that, that's what we're going to estimate. So we're going to spend about $100 uh, per month on paper and those sorts of things, um, handouts, that sort of thing for the, uh, for the class each month, that each of the seven months that we're going to offer the class. Now, to assist us in instructing the class, uh, and it's really important when you're doing something like a community language class, for example, to have materials to use. There's a wide range of things. You might have uh, flashcards of different sorts. Um, just a, a bit of a commercial on the side. The SICC provides a number of um, the language class uh, language kits that you can use 
And this, this, so we're going to provide a kit of material for each of the 50 or so participants who might expect, uh, who might uh, attend one of these one of these sessions to be held at the Skunk Hollow Community Language class. And we we're going to estimate that our curriculum kits, our education resource materials. We're going to buy 50 of those kits and they cost $60 each. So our total cost for our, our educational resources is going to be $3,000. Now, as you know, administration is part of any sort of, of, of project. So we're going to just ballpark that we're going to need something like $300 a month for administration and that sort of stuff. Uh, someone to do our bookkeeping, that sort of stuff. And our administration costs are going to be $300 per month for each of the first uh, six months of the project. Then during the seventh month in March, we're going to double that because, of course, there's going to be that's when the project's going to end. We're going to need to wind things up and do final reporting. And so those are those are those are our total budget then, uh, just over fifty thousand for the instructor, for just forty two hundred for rent, seven thousand dollars, seven hundred dollars for ed, uh, classroom educational resource material, three thousand dollars for the uh, curriculum kits that we're going to buy, that we're going to keep them at the, at the school. We're not going to hand them out to the participants, but they'll be there every, at, at every session for the class, for the, uh, for the participants to, to utilize. And then we have our, our administration costs based on what we, we talked about $300 a month and then 600 for the last uh, month of the year comes up to $2,400. So our total project, for, uh, total cost of the project is $25,420. So that's a you know not not a, a bad uh, bad overall cost. So that's our budget. So that's what we submitted. Uh, we probably really would have only we would have broken down our costs when we uh, did our our funding proposal. Probably though we'd only have presented this line of, of information here. But as we costed these these things, all these things just occurred naturally that we would discover that we would need twenty one hundred and sixty dollars to pay the instructor during the, the first month. Okay, so there's there's our, our business model. There's our, our plan to offer a class uh, at, at Skunk Hollow. And so what I'll do then is I'll go to, um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. So here's our, our our our, our cash flow. So it's the cash flow that we would have emailed out, and I've filled out some of the information already. So the name of the organization, in this case, is the the Soto uh, Language Keepers. Okay, so that's the, name of the organization. There's the project name: Skunk Hollow Community Language Classes. Average of funding, uh, average of language initiative. The fiscal year. It's running from September first, twenty eighteen, to March thirty first. Uh, 2019, and there's what we've been uh, approved for. So uh, Heritage Canada, uh, through uh, the uh, to the administration of, of SICC, you know. So we're going to provide $25,420 for that. So we we put that in there, coming from Heritage Canada. In this case, we don't have any third part uh, other funding. We don't have any in kind. So our total revenue for the project is $25,420, and we then break it down. So here's. Uh, our total for our instructors um, uh, for the whole year is 15,120. So we'll, we're, we're going to start with that intro, for information. And then we're going to fill in the information that we need. I've also broken out the, the allocation. I'm not going to do anything particularly fancy. We're just going to say the project gets 90% of its funding at the start there in September and the other 10%. We're gonna do something a little bit more complicated in the case of most of the recipients for this year, but the, this will do for our example sorts of purposes. So what we want to do is take then our work plan there for Skunk Hollow and translate that into our, our spreadsheet, okay? And so here we have uh, September, and this is the line for the uh, instructor salary. So, how much of that that are we gonna gonna allocate? So, as you know, with a spreadsheet, we can do uh, uh, we can we can do uh, a formula if we want. So, this is going is going to be uh, the sixty dollars that we're paying the instructor times uh, three hours times the twelve sessions. And so, there's our amount there. So, the twenty one hundred and sixty dollars for September that we allocated for the salary for the uh, the instructor. Uh, I won't bother doing the other formulas, but so we're going to pay 2520 
for um, the instructor for October 2340 for uh, November uh, 1620 for uh, December. And you notice that the, uh, the, the formulas in this, the shaded areas are kicking in to do our sum total by, by the quarter. And so then we'll do the last quarter. So 2160 for each of January, February, and March. So there's our there's our total then. And so as we go along, we want to make sure our, ad, our numbers add up here. So when we did our work plan, we estimated that we'd be spending the fifteen thousand one hundred and twenty dollars for the instructor uh, instructor salary, and then we're going to pay our our rent. So again, we could use a, a formula. So we're going to have twelve sessions uh, during September. And we're going to charge uh, fifty. We're going to get charged fifty dollars an evening per per rent for that. So the six hundred dollars. This and then the succeeding months, I'll just type in the numbers. So seven hundred dollars for rent during October, six fifty for uh, November, uh, four fifty for December, uh, and January. We're going to pay six hundred. February as well, and March gets paid 600 as well. So for our classroom materials, uh, paper, handouts, those sorts of things, um, uh, we're going to uh, uh, pay the $100 a month. And so we'll show that for each month. And so if you're a bit more proficient, you can sort of copy and paste over as, as you need. But I'm just going to type in the, the, the specific numbers as, as we need them. And so $100 in the last. And there's, again, as you go along, you probably want to double check that the 700 is what you estimated. And that's what it shows up on the, uh, on the, uh, on the formula, on the, the, the spreadsheet as well. So, uh, so uh, the kits, uh, so remember, we're going to get, get, get 50 of the curriculum kits because we estimate there might be a maximum of 50 people attending one, one of our classes, and we're going to keep those uh, uh, and, and bring them back to every class. And so for the 50 uh, uh, kits at $60 each, we will be paying $3,000. And so we'll show that in our spreadsheet. So that's the, the one-time cost in September to get the uh, the curriculum, the re education resource material that we will be using week after after week. And then for administration, as we talked about, we're going to pay three hundred dollars um, to do our bookkeeping and that sort of thing each each month. I imagine the uh, instructor would have to fill in some sort of time card to get paid. And so for each month, we're going to pay three hundred dollars to a bookkeeper. Uh, perhaps we might uh, have other administration costs. Uh, 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 there might be a program administrator, administrator, program director who's working with the instructor. So we're going to have administration costs of three hundred dollars each month. Uh, except for last month when it will be 600 because we're going to pay a little bit more to get our, our year-end program. Okay, so that's it. That's pretty much as 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 basic as as we need. Uh, in-kind expenses get a little bit more complicated. If you have in-kind expenses, do talk to us about those. That's basically as complicated as should get should get. Now things should balance out. Okay, everything should should in the final event. Uh, balance out the one difference and it's really more for us is that we do have this variance because we're doing the hold back because we want people to uh, finish their their year-end reporting then they get the, the balance of the uh, of the funding and this is going to be uh vary by by recipient so basically everything should should zero out and if it's not well you've got a problem and so uh and again the last little tip i may mention is that we're gonna for the for our purposes we're gonna click on that these are forecasts and as the SIC and, C and, and the recipient potentially as well, we might switch these from a forecast to the actual expenditures. Um, and do contact uh, uh, us if, for example, you do see that there might be some variance in what you forecast for your expenditures because, oh, someone might take, uh, there, someone might not be available during your particular month for whatever reason. And so you may not be expending as much for, um, uh, for a, a salary because the person just wasn't available at a particular time period. So we do uh, uh, do allow for variances and, uh, 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 and it would allow people to uh, to make changes as, as they need. Okay, so this is, is your, your basic participatory sort of project. 
Uh, there might be some variation of, uh, 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 you know, you might have something more complicated. Uh, you might have more breakdown of your, your, your uh, expenses, for example. So that, that's one of the major types of project that we might, might see. And so, um, so there's that type of project. Now, I also so, want uh, to share. Gary, oh, Gary before, uh, yeah. before we move on, can we just talk about that PCH approved column yeah. beside your total budget amounts yeah. there? So, sure, so when, uh, when folks have their total budget amounts in that column there, like there, there are caps and limits on what can be spent on things like administration, travel, food and equipment rental and things like that. And so, so we, we calculate if you're within those uh, parameters, you know, and so, so the, all, combined, you know, there's a 20% limit on, uh, on uh, those combined expenses for food administration and, uh, and uh, equipment rental and purchase and travel. And so, so that PCH approved is what uh, we enter in, you know, to say if you're, you're, you're 15, 120 uh, for language instruction, it would equal that we would, we would show what areas uh, you're covered in. And typically we'd want them all to, to be within those acceptable uh, percentages. And so we, we'd, we'd calculate that and we just tell you if there's something that's over. Okay, um, so I just uh, we'll continue on. So I do want to show another type of, of of cash flow here. It's it's a bit different. So this is for again, it, it's sort of a made up one, but this actually is a is a a project that develops curriculum and offers a participatory uh, a, a aspect to, to it as well. So uh, and actually, this is based on a project that was that did occur. That, that did did happen and has been approved and reviewed by by, by Heritage Canada uh, and just to show that you know it, it uh, you know you can get these combinations we do have someone uh, having workshop kits for example or some translation because there was some curriculum development there's some elders involved um, now you'll notice that we actually have a fair number of expenses in this particular case. And and the initial sort of strategy, I'm not sure this will, this, this will apply to everyone, but you'll see in the spreadsheet that we would have mailed out, e uh, emailed out, you have expenses here from, oh, uh, 23 to, to 31, rows 23 to 31, but you can actually add more expenses in as you need to. Now, what you want to do is just go in and uh, do something like insert a row. Now, what you got to be careful about, though, is normally things adjust. But notice that on some of these these uh, these fields here, they didn't copy over, copy over the formula. If you're a bit of a bit, bit more of a, a spreadsheet uh, guru, you might go and uh, copy and then paste the role that you copied. But if you do do the step of just inserting, and that's certainly a good way to do it, you've got to make sure that you copy the formula from above to this blank line that you've you, you've uh, inserted here. So, uh, you know, so we'll watch for that. And yes, in principle, you can have much more expenses, quite a long list of expenses by inserting rows or better still copying uh, one of these lines from uh, 23 to 31, and then pasting it back in so it gets the formulas back in there. So you, you can add those. We do, do want again, just emphasize the importance of when you're adding data, just add it to the blank areas these other shaded areas are for administration office use. And as I say, do be careful that if you just insert a row, you may have to copy in a formula to the blank areas. Otherwise, your results will start screwing up. You won't be getting uh, your grand totals added up, added up uh, properly. So, so, but, but, uh, so I did want to point that little trick out. And let me switch back then to uh, participatory and uh, resource development type of, of, of program. So again, I just want to show this as an example um, of a particular uh, project. And again, it, this is how we did this, this, the spreadsheet for it. And it was all approved and fine and dandy based on, on this. Um, and then um, and we'll have these available. If people want to look at it as a sample. Then, but again, I do want to emphasize we, we are available for um, uh, for uh, let's see, uh, yeah, uh, so we are available for consultation, and this is a purely 
resource development one. Again, this was an approved project. This was basically the budget. I changed the title and little, little things like that. But basically, this was a successful uh, uh, capsule that was submitted for a project that was funded by, by Ali. Just changed some of the numbers, uh, uh, some of the titles, some of the, the information. And so, um, so again, we'll have this available for, for people to look at it as a possible, possible model.